Hello, I'm Eve, the creative curator, in case you didn't know. Um, maybe you've been binge watching my videos or maybe you haven't. If you haven't, I'm Eve, the creative curator. I am all about sustainable fashion creation. Specifically, um, my passions are on pattern making, pattern cutting, draping, contouring, um, but obviously you need to know how to sew <laughs> to do all of that. So I also talk about sewing as well. Um, today, we're actually going to talk about pattern making. There's a lot of confusion about the different words that are used when it comes to developing patterns, whether that's sewing patterns for yourself or if you're thinking about making patterns for um, other reasons, <laughs> which my mind cannot think of any. So like maybe if you're a fashion designer like me, you're creating basic blocks that you then develop into patterns and that block would fit your certain, like your fit model, your house style. You might be a dressmaker making um, custom pieces for clients, in which case you might need to have a set of blocks for each client that you develop into patterns. You might be a freelance pattern maker that goes around and you have you use the blocks for the house where you're working, the fashion house or the design studio <laughs> and you're developing patterns for them based on those like there's a whole bunch of different reasons you might be a person who loves sewing and you've been doing it for decades and you've decided to start making sewing patterns to sell as an indie pattern designer all sorts of reasons why that might happen so i thought we'd debunk some of the ideas around pattern making the different words that are used and all that kind of things <laughs> So I started out pattern making, well, where I come from in the UK, it's called pattern cutting. But if I use the term pattern cutting, then my American audience has been like, what? Um, and I don't get any organic search traffic because it's like pattern cutting, like everyone searches for pattern making and pattern drafting. Um, but in the UK, it's pattern cutting. So I, I fell in love, I went to Central St. Martin's um, and I did a couple of short classes there, professional sewing and um, some basic pattern making classes. And I loved it. And the guy that was teaching um, the innovative pattern making, his name was Patrick. And at the end of the class, um, it was run over like 15 weeks. But when I left, he said to me, you've got a natural talent for this. You should stick with it. And I was blown away because I love pattern cutting. I think it's brilliant. And so that led me to go on and do my foundation in art and design at Wimbledon Art College. And then from there, actually before there, I did some pattern making courses, BTEC courses at Kensington and Chelsea College. And then I ended up going to do a fashion degree at um, University of the Creative Arts in Epsom um, because they had um, a couple of really great pattern cutters working there as tutors. Um, Annette Fisher is one of them, who, whose book I have. Uh, here, Sewing for Fashion Designers, that's her book. So I absolutely love everything to do with pattern cutting. <laughs> now, what is pattern cutting? Pattern cutting is the, it's the skill of, if you think about something that I'm wearing, so I've got like this a sheepskin gilet, it's second hand, third or fourth hand maybe, but it was given to me about 10 years ago. And this didn't just come into existence because somebody drew a picture and then it it happened it's a you have to create a blue pin blue pin <laughs> a blue print for every item of clothing and it's it's a pattern so here's one i prepared earlier this is a woman's narrow shirt this is the back and this is the front these are the blocks okay this is the sh narrow shirt front block that i have so it's not a pattern because as you can see the center front it doesn't have a button stand. There's no seam allowance included. Um, this is a block and a block is created by pattern drafting. So it's when you will take a set of measurements, you'll use something like a tape measure <laughs> and a pattern master. I don't know where my pattern master is. This video is really ad hoc. I'm just kind of like waffling to camera at it because I was like, I should explain this like concept. So my tool of choice as a pattern maker, pattern cutter, is um, it's a pattern master from Moreplan. Um, I don't know if you can get them on Moreplan anymore. I tried to order some other stuff the other day and I couldn't get it. But it's it's almost like a French curve. You've got some like curvy sections. You've got your straight edge and that's like 42 and a half, 43 centimeters total. You've got your lines here so you can find your grain, your straight, your cross, 
and then your bias and you can see if you look here over my neck you can see these lines and those are like different seam allowance amounts so maybe i want to add a four centimeter hem i would just find the four centimeter psh, line across um this is like my absolute favorite tool <laughs> this is a pattern cutters tool of choice they wouldn't be without it and of course we've covered it before sorry to camera we've covered it before but also a tracing wheel like you need a tracing wheel to mark in different things so that you're truing your patterns as you go anyway i got ahead of myself so basically first of all a pattern cutter needs to know how to draft patterns using measurements and they create they draft blocks like this in america they're also called slopers i'm not sure how the rest of the world like australia and canada refer to them so a block is your base blueprint this would have been created from an easy or loose fit coat block okay so let's start with three things first of all you have a moulage okay it's a french word the moulage is something that is basically if you were to someone were to come to me and drape fabric on me obviously i'd be wearing like a fitted bra and everything so it was like an accurate representation of my body when like naked but with basic underwear and a moulage is it's an exact blueprint of your body the thing is there is no wearing ease moving ease <laughs> included okay so if I was to, if they did my arm and I tried to bend my arm, I wouldn't be able to because there's no ease. There's no space for the movement to happen. Okay, that's wearing ease. Then you have the block, which, as I've already shown you, is this. Now, this doesn't have any seam allowance. It has no pattern information on it because it is a block. And what that means is it's got, it's like a moulage, except it has wearing ease. So you can see it's shaped to the waist and you can see there's dart if i took this dart it would be very close and this would be borderline moulage with maybe <clears throat> excuse me with maybe a tiny bit of wearing ease this a blocks so moulage no wearing ease blocks wearing ease when this is developed into a pattern here's one i prepared earlier Hang on, I'm about to drop a bit. So this now has seam allowance added. It has a button stand added. Has the dart. This has design ease. So you have three different types of ease. You have zero ease, you have wearing ease, and you have design ease. Now, this jacket doesn't have a lot of design ease in it because it's made for someone about five sizes smaller than I am. So it doesn't, it, doesn't, it just won't go up across my boobs at all. That's fine, it just keeps me warm in my sewing room. Um, what was my point? Uh, ease, design ease. But you might see, when you're looking at a sewing pattern, hang on, I've got to try and find a sewing pattern that's commercial. Okay, I found one, like the Linden sweater, okay? Grainline Studios, I bought this in Wales, 2000, early 2018, haven't made it. I'm terrible, I buy all these other patterns from other people, because I'm like, oh yeah, I should support them. Oh, that's really cool, then I don't make them. Sometimes I cut them out, I've got a pile of stuff there that I've cut out. But the actual getting to making it, I'd rather develop my own patterns and teach other people pattern making. So here it will tell you, can you see this? Body measurements, but then at the bottom it shows you the finished measurements. It's in inches, I do centimeters. That's probably another reason I haven't made it. Um, <laughs> Finished measurements include design ease. So if I look at body measurements for a size, let's go size 18 because it's US, so that'll be me. Bust 44, that is me. Okay, so the bust is 44 inches. If we go down and we look at the finished measurements, the bust for my size 18 is 50 and a half inches. So that tells me that there's six and a half inches of design ease included. Okay, that's, that's basically what design ease. So if we're looking at this pattern, if for some reason it flared out like an A-line shape and was a dress, the amount, if you took the hip measurement, so currently it says the hip for my size is 47, for my body measurements, 47 inches. I'm actually about 44 inches, I think. Um, if I then look at the finished measurements, hip view, let's go hip view two, B, 49 inches. That, if it was an A-line shape, so if it was coming out along here, that hip measurement will be greater 
because of the design ease that's added in to make the design trapeze like a-line shape and so that would probably read maybe 65 or 70 inches okay and the difference between say seven let's say 70 inches between that and the hips of 47 inches of me that's like 20 something inches of design ease so that's the difference between a moulage which is like basically form fitted a block which includes wearing ease and then a pattern which includes the wearing ease plus design ease okay so as a pattern maker pattern cutter you need to know how to draft blocks and i've got a whole load of tutorials on that on the blog thecreativecurator.com and i've also got some videos here so you'll want to know how to draft a bodice front and back it's always done on one piece of paper together because you're squaring across and up and down and all that shenanigans so you always do it on one very large piece of paper you also would develop a skirt block a sleeve block i have a video tutorial on that as well and also a trouser or pants block um, those would be your basic blocks from there you would do, and that's pattern drafting okay so you're drafting those patterns from scratch then the act of pattern making is to expand upon them so if you were to take my assume this was a basic women's bodice block created by following the female bodice block tutorial that i have okay i've expanded this there's extra information on here so in that um, tutorial there's a shoulder dart that comes down to the bust point it's not on here um this has more shaping it has because it's a narrow fitted shirt block so i've developed my basic block <laughs> i hope this is making sense into a this is a development block okay for a narrow shirt i would also expand upon it maybe if i was making a coat block i would extend the shoulder line because you have to think about if you if it's an outerwear garment you need to have extra space for the clothes that go under it so like you might be wearing a t-shirt or a shirt and a blouse or a sweater or something on top of it a cardigan and if you're wearing a coat obviously the coat needs to be even bigger it has needs to have more design ease and more wearing ease because you've got things underneath so you would then maybe if i was taking my basic bodice block and developing it into a coat pattern i'd have to extend the shoulder line i'd want to open up the armhole i'd want to extend the width and the length of the block there are different things that you would want to do to make sure that you can fit clothes underneath that coat block okay again that's pattern making that's like developing a block into another mm, yeah because it is still unless you were to go the route of drafting from scratch there's a book Winifred Aldrich I don't know where I've put it I had it out last night to show my boyfriend something okay I found it it was still in the kitchen <laughs> I shouldn't take my pattern making books to the kitchen but anyway so this is metric pattern cutting for women's wear from Winifred Aldrich Aldrich I don't know how to say it when I very first the very first time I learned how to do pattern making how to make a pattern I made something from a book by Winifred um it was terrible it was my first time at drafting a pattern I actually did a bloody good job it was a frock coat um but I'd never drafted a I'd never drafted anything from scratch and if you look at her instructions um let me find one for a coat block because it will make it like be a bit clearer for you so I was going to show you like the step-by-step -step process that she runs you through um actually it's not in this book <laughs> i don't use this book um this isn't the book the one that i had when i was back is before i even went to fashion school um it was purple and this one is the sixth edition it's green metric pattern coating for women's wear um it's not in here it's like really annoying but basically so this is the basic shirt block can you see those instructions and she had something similar for a frock coat so it was a basic coat pattern that i developed into a frock coat um and it was really complex and there was actually an error in the instructions as well which i didn't realize <laughs> my teacher at csm central st martin's pointed it out but um i forgot my point yeah so if you were going to create a block from scratch so not using like a jacket block my hair's about to fall out sorry so this is like a shirt block narrow shirt block if i wanted to create a coat or jacket block from scratch i would be drafting it and that would be a block if i was developing it from this it would be a development pattern i think i'm just going to confuse you with all that so then of course if you've created a block 
you would want to trace this off and then you would name that on paper as your development pattern yeah because you're developing it and you mark in all the different lines like the style lines this is flat pattern making okay so let's just go back a bit you have flat pattern making which is taking a block developing it on the flat which means on the table it's two-dimensional it's flat it's flat pattern making then you have draping which is taking a lady this is my miniature one because I can't get my big ones behind the camera and I can't get her into the screen so draping if I was to take fabric and develop um, on the stand away from the body that's draping if I were to develop it close to the body following different style lines so these are her her bust her waist and her hip line and center front she's also got a center back look <laughs> but if I were to mark in using more tape style lines and then I were to use like um, interfacing the, the heavyweight one violin and develop it close to the body that would be contouring and then there's three what well, I'm not sure of the exact term for it actually but like not flat pattern making it's like 3d pattern making so you might like develop a pattern not necessarily on paper but on fabric and then drape it and that's different as well so different ways to develop patterns and that really kind of differentiates the different words pattern making pattern cutting pattern well pattern making and pattern drafting drafting is when you're drafting from scratch pattern making is when you're developing any like blocks that you've drafted into patterns pattern cutting is an english term in the uk i would be refer i would refer to myself as a creative pattern cutter because i was able to I, or i am able to draft patterns um from scratch like blocks and then develop them into patterns and also do the draping and the contouring and create quite creative pattern cutting um like there's an ma or there was an ma was it an ma or a postgraduate certificate in creative pattern making at central st martin's that i really wanted to do but my tutor from fashion school and some of the technicians there said there was no point because my creative pattern making skills were beyond that they were so advanced because I'd been practicing a lot in my spare time and before I even went to fashion school I did quite a bit and so they were like there's no point paying like I think it was like £12,000 to do that when you already have the skills you won't be learning anything you just get like a certificate so I didn't do it anyway that's a little backstory so what else can I tell you about pattern making it's fun it's the best fun like let me grab a book hang on like pattern making is pattern cutting pattern drafting is the art of creating blueprints for clothes for fashion now i hate wearing the same thing as everybody else i hate walking down the street and being like oh you're wearing the same thing as me oh like it happened in the street in new york i had something i had bought in the uk i'd hacked it made it shorter went to new york was i was living there wandered around and crossed the crossing and there's somebody wearing the same dress as me and it's like hate it <laughs> so i much prefer to make my own clothes because it's just a more individual unique and creative way to be me um i have this obsession i haven't bought one for a while now but when i first started learning about like experimental and innovative pattern making techniques i would go and buy this it's vogue collections and it has pretty much all the major um fashion shows for each season so this one is fall winter 2014 so it's a bit old i'm trying to think what my earliest is yeah i still have spring summer 2010 up there i think because it had balenciaga in it that i loved but my favorite one of my favorite things to do so isabel moral she's a french designer um i love going through and looking at the collections i don't even know how to say that valentin Yudash yudashkin um, oh, Zadig and Voltaire. Look at that lovely. I couldn't wear it because I don't have the figure for it, but it's gorgeous. Oh, look, we've got some Christopher Kane. Can you see? So, my favourite thing is to go through here, find some of the interesting looks, and then it's called design analysis. When you look at something, and you, I do this when I walk into a shop if I see something, but I don't want to pay for it because I don't like the ethics of how it was constructed, made, and so on and so forth somewhere in the world. I will look at it and I'll evaluate it and I'll analyze it and I'll think, okay, well, what, what block would have been used and what's the development process? And I might make a quick sketch or make a turn, take a sneaky photo and I write down the notes on my phone. 
I'll be like, okay, it's got an extended button stand, it's almost double breasted, it's got this collar and it's been had got a drop shoulder line and yada yada yada. And then I can go home and I can take one of my many blocks that I've got there hanging and I can develop it into a pattern for myself. So I have, um, I don't think you can see, it's off screen. Let me show the camera. Over there, that's a selection of folders of different patterns. I have boxes down there. <laughs> and a massive box out there that's just full of patterns that I've developed. So at some point I'll probably get around to digitizing and making available. But it's so much fun to, oh, that camera's a bit close, hang on. It's so much fun to just look through. And that book that I showed you um, in another video. Having a look through here and seeing, like you might see like a, a certain detail, like look at this lovely one, Pato in 1967. Bolero top suits. Can you see that lovely collar? Like maybe I want to develop like a little dress with that collar. It's so cute. Like being able to make your own patterns, to develop blocks into patterns for yourself and others. It's so much fun. <sighs> okay, so that's the difference between pattern making, pattern drafting, pattern cutting, draping, contouring. And we've covered the melage, which has no wearing ease at all. I forgot what the next one is, the block. <laughs> See, I forget things do, which has wearing ease included. And then of course the pattern, which would have design ease. Um, I think that's everything. If it's not, I'm sure I'll add to the notes. My cat's screeching to come in. Um, if you found this informational, informational <laughs> or helpful, <laughs> don't forget to um, like to let me know like the video to let me know. Drop a comment below to let me know your thoughts on pattern making versus pattern drafting versus draping versus contouring. Um, oh, I'm like dreaming now. I'm going to do some draping videos, I think. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you can get my new videos notified. <laughs> I don't know. I'm too busy thinking about pattern making. Yeah, don't forget to hit subscribe so you get and the bell notifications from YouTube when I have new videos. And if there's anything you would like to see, um, like if you'd like to learn anything about pattern making, developing patterns, let me know in the comments because I want to create as many videos as possible. So I would love to know what's your top video that you'd like me to create first. Okay, see you next time. Bye.